So what's market value? Let's talk about that and then get into the latest home prices and insights for the city of Toronto for week ending March the 1st, 2023. The reason I'm asking about market value is we recently were part of a transaction where we're representing the seller and the first day we listed an offer came in and it was, it, it, it was low. It was a low ball offer. And when I called the agent representing the buyers and said, Hey, you know, what's going on with this offer? It's kind of low. He said, well, my client really, really loves the house, but he's not prepared to pay more than market value. I'm like, okay. We negotiated a bit, but we didn't end up selling to that buyer because my client, the seller had a different idea of what market value for his property was. And a few days later, we ended up selling it for, for much more than what that original offer was. But it, it brings up the question, what is market value? And there's different types of definitions out there. Some people will say um, it's what a buyer's willing to, to, to pay and what a seller is willing to accept the two combined is market value. Well, when you say it that way, it kind of implies that both buyer and seller have a 50-50 split in determining what's market value. That's nice in writing, but in reality, in the real life practice, more of the market value or who determines market value, most of the responsibility really leans towards the buyer side. It's the buyer that really determines market value. Sellers at the end of the day, if they want to sell, have no choice but to sell to what buyers are prepared to pay. These days it seems that buyers are tripping over themselves again to, to outbid each other. In many situations we see this happening. But at the end of the day, it's the buyer and what the buyer is willing to spend which determines market value. Now, you may decide that prices are way too high right now. They should be 30% cheaper than where they are now. That's fine. You can think whatever you want, but that's not market value. That's just where you wish the prices would be or you feel that's where the value is. But market value is really the reality of how much are people actually, how much are buyers actually spending on a property today in that neighborhood. That's market value and it could change weekly. Understanding the concept of market value when you're looking to buy or looking to sell, to me, it's crucial in, in being successful in your purchase or in your sale. We've seen buyers, like the buyer that I said, just, you know, they put in a, a low ball offer and said that their client loves the property, but is not prepared to pay more than market value. Well, I, I'm not sure where they got that idea of market value, even though they love the property, they had the wrong information. Maybe they had the budget to buy, maybe they didn't, I, I can't say for sure, but they were under the impression that they had a good offer. Well, when we determined market value, when we consulted with our seller, I mean, we, we take a lot of emotion out of it. It's really about the numbers and what logically makes sense. The numbers meaning, well, what's selling in that area for how much? And when we compare features, how does our property compare to those features of the properties that have sold and the properties we're competing with that are currently for sale? And what's the direction of the market right now? Is it a market that's going down? Is it going up? And what kind of demand for that type of house is in there? All these things come into play when we decide and give an estimate of how much will this house sell for? So that to me is market value. What it actually sells for is the reality of market value, but we need to kind of determine this up front. When we're working with buyers or any of you that are thinking of buying, your realtor needs to give you a really, really accurate, good idea of how much that property you're interested in should sell for. Now, at the end of the day, you as the buyer are going to decide, am I prepared to spend that or not? That's your call. But also when you're selling, we've seen sellers 
turned down what we think is a, is a very reasonable, decent, fair price. Now that's fair based on the current market. They've turned them down thinking, I can get much more. And then they don't and then time goes by and then they were forced to reduce the price and end up selling it for less than what they originally received an off on offer for. That's just because they didn't have a good concept up front of what their property should sell for. So whether you're buying, whether you're selling, you really need to know those numbers and then decide if it makes sense for you. That's market value and it's a, it's a, it's a vital skill of a realtor to be able to tell you accurately what's happening with the property you're interested in buying or interested in selling. If you think this video can help somebody you know, please pass it along. If you find this information useful, please subscribe. Let's get into the numbers. You want to speak with me about your real estate situation, selling, buying, it's really simple. Below this video in the description, there's a link to my calendar. Click on that, book a time that's convenient for you. This way I'll know ahead of time and I'll make sure my schedule is organized so we can talk about whatever's on your mind. So are Toronto homes worth the steep price? You know, that's not an easy question to answer. Before this introduction, I was talking about market value. Now I'm talking about worth. Are Toronto homes worth the steep price? Well, worth seems to have a, a, a bit of a, more of a personal feeling type of inclination to, to the word worth. And I, I think the reality is somewhere in between. Some people figure out worth by math. They, they look at what are other homes sold for, what's the difference in features, they could kind of put put numbers to it, that home had a finished basement, this one doesn't, they put a number to that and this is what this home is worth. Other people, totally feelings, they'll look at a home and there's full day sunlight in the backyard, they picture their kids playing all day in the sun, that home is worth more to them than on the other side of the street that gets no sun in the backyard. Worth, market value, I think the reality for most people is a combination of both feeling and numbers. What makes sense? You tell me in the comments below. Let's get into the numbers. We're gonna start off looking at City of Toronto detached properties, but I've got them broken down by month. After this, we'll get into the weekly charts, but here's a monthly look at what's going on. So for week ending, sorry, for month ending February, and I've got in black highlighted every February going back to February 2019. Compared to last year, our current price of 1,712,000 is 18, I'm going, so I'm looking at the arrows, I got lots of arrows on here. Compared to the absolute peak of February last year, it was the highest price we've ever had. From 2,075,000, we are currently 18% lower than where the average sold price was a year ago. I'm surprised it's only 18% lower. To get back to that price, we need to increase the current average sold price by 21% to get back to 2 million and 75. But let's go all the way back to 2019. Our current price, or average sold price, we're said 2019 we're sitting about 1.3 here, 1298. We are currently 32% higher than where the average sold price was in February 2019. To come back to 2019 prices, the current price of 1,712,000 needs to come down by 24% to get us back to February 2019. For those people that keep talking about 20%, 30% more drop, 40% more drop, well, just to get to 2019, we need to drop 24%. Let me show you something else with the actual sales, the numbers. So 482 were sold. These are just detached properties for February 23. Now, if we look during 2022, 
we have February and we have March, but come April, sales started to come down. Let's go to the previous year, 2021. We have February, 906. Our highest month was also March, and then after March, sales started to drop again. We're not gonna talk about 2020, just because that was the year the whole world turned upside down. But if we look at the last two years, and we keep thinking we talk about spring market. You've heard me talk about we expect more listings in the spring market. Well, in the previous two years, it really wasn't spring. It was still part of the winter market. It was February and March that we had the most sales and then sales went down from there. So February, March, and then sales went down. But before 2020, so we look at 2019, that's when we had the first, I guess we'll call normal year before the world turned upside down. And February, March, April sales went up, May sales went up, and that's the spring market there, and then it started to come down again. So as far as the spring market goes and seasons, 2019 was the last time we had a, what we call a regular type of season. 21, 2022, not so regular. What are we gonna see this year? Well, we'll see. We're seeing sales now all of a sudden February pick up. Average sold price has gone up. Here's months of inventory. We're sitting at 1.9 months of inventory for February. Let's see, is March, April, May, is it gonna go up the way we expect or are we headed down from there? Let's go into a weekly schedule like we normally do here. City of Toronto for detached properties broken down by week. I have a whole year up here for week ending March the 1st. So most of that week is the last week of February. Sales jumped way up from 104 and we were hovering for four weeks around between 100 and 111. We jumped up to 154 detached sales for the last week of February. 43 of those were at $2 million or more, which was a huge jump from the previous few weeks of 24 and 27. We, did, we sold 43 at $2 million or more. Average sold price came down slightly from the previous week, sitting at 1,697,000. 1697 is 15% lower than where the average sold price was a year ago. I'm surprised it's only 15 because that was our peak that we're comparing it to. I expected the, the, the difference between year over year to be much higher. Uh, the median price is 20% lower than where the median price was a year ago. The, four, the, the dotted line here is the four week moving average. This green line here also dotted separates last year, this year. Last year prices were kind of flat or heading down in, in many cases towards the end of the year. But this year, median price, average sold price going up. It's sloping upwards. Prices are increasing almost with each week. Looking at sales, the orange is this year. So I've said already, we went from 104 to 154 sales in, in one week. Last year, the same thing happened at this time. Sales went way up from one week to the next and 46% of those 154 sales sold at list price or more. Listings didn't go up so much the way sales went up, but listings did increase slightly. Months of inventory came down, sitting at 1.2 months of inventory. That's really low. That's a, under four months of inventory is a seller's market, but there's a big difference between, say, three months of inventory or 2.6 months of inventory and now we're sitting at 1.2 months of inventory. If you are active in the market, whether you're selling or buying, you feel the intensity out there. Few listings to see. Buyers are tripping over themselves in many cases for the few good properties that are on the market. Here's City of Toronto split up in nine different regions and just a, a quick glance the lowest months of inventory is Scarborough, 0 0.7 months of inventory. And East York Beaches, Riverdale area, 0 0.8 months of inventory. And Scarborough, 
65% of the properties are selling at list price or more. Lots of competition there. West and Yorkdale area, 53% of the properties are selling at list price or more. Let's take a close look at semis. Sales since the beginning of the year have been increasing the way we would expect, right? So 44 semis were sold for a week ending March the 1st. Eight of those were at $1.5 million or more. Average sold price came way down from the previous week, sitting at $1,201,000. $1,201,000 is 25% lower than where the average sold price was a year ago. The median price of a million and seventy-nine is 27% lower than where the median price was a year before that. And the four-week moving average for both average and median is increasing. Prices are going up through the course that, that this year has started. Months of inventory for semis sitting at 0.8 months of inventory. And over 40% of all the semis that are sold are sold at list price or more. Townhouses, only 10 freehold townhouses were sold. Three of those were at 1.5 million or more. Actually, two of those three were over $2 million. Average sold price sitting at 1,406,000. 1,406,000 is 2% higher than last year's average sold price. The median price of 1,268,000 is 4% lower. So townhouses are, for this week anyways, but there was only 10 sold, so keep that in mind. Average sold price is pretty much on par as to where it was a year ago. Months of inventory climbed up a bit to sit, sitting at 1.6 months of inventory. More than half of those townhouses that were sold, sold at list price or more. 60% sold at list price or more. Here's condos. Now this is a monthly breakdown. February 2023, 952 condos were sold. Average sold price, 728,000. 728 is 11% lower than where the price was a year ago. To get back to where the price was a year ago, our current average sold price needs to go up by 13%. But if we look way back to February 2019, we are currently at 728. We are 19% higher than where the prices were in February 2019. And if we drop by 16%, we'll be at February 2019 prices. That's what's going on with condos on a monthly basis overall. Months of inventory sitting at 2.8 months of inventory. Here's condos on a weekly basis, broken down for a year. Sales are increasing, not every single week, but generally speaking going up. And from just like the detached market from the previous week to this week, for week ending March the 1st, sales jumped up quite a bit from the previous week. 251 condos were sold, 24 of those were at $1 million or more. Average sold price is 734,000. 734 is 12% lower than where the average sold price was a year ago. I'd said this year we sold 24 at $1 million or more. This time last year, 72, 24 versus 72. Big difference in the amount of luxury condos being sold. Median price of 643 is 15% lower than where the median price was a year ago. But that's a year ago. You know, I keep comparing to a year ago because a lot of people use it as reference. The most important thing, especially if you're looking to transact, you're looking to buy or sell, what's happening right now and what trend are we on right now? And right now, this year moving forward, median price, and average sold price is trending upwards. It's not as steep. The condo market prices are not increasing as, as steep as they are in the detached market, but they are moving upwards. Of the 251 that sold, 39% sold at list price or more. Listings went up a bit, 528 condos were listed, and months of inventory came down, came down quite a bit sitting at 1.9 months of inventory. Here's months of inventory as a summary. 
incredibly low. 1.2, 0 0.8, 1.6, 1.9. It's very much a seller's market out there, folks. Now, it's not with the same intensity it was a year ago in a sense that buyers are at you know, 300, 400, 500,000 over asking was the norm. We are seeing that in some situations. One property we were looking at with some buyers had 15 offers on it and sold 400,000 over asking. And there are more and more of those examples coming up. There is an intensity right now in the market. Seems to be a shortage in listings. It's more buyers all of a sudden decided now we want to buy. So it's kind of like the perfect storm. I'm not predicting the future. I'm not sure which way this is going to go. Is it going to calm down? Is it going to continue to intensify? But this is what's happening right now. And most people don't even know what's happening right now. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.